Hi everybody. So um, our user run Aston has made a really cool macro that I wanted to show you guys how to uh, recreate. The macro we're talking about is helpful when you do spotting, for example, fully. Let's say you have a bunch of tracks that you use for spotting and you want to record a cue for a chair movement. For that, the first step would be to create a new clip group, then open the rename dialog, type in chair and hit OK and wait for the dialog to close. But we can automate these steps. So imagine you had, you had a stream deck with, with uh, different types of cues already pre-prepared. You could just hit one button and it would add this clip group to your selection. Um, so one way to do it would be to automate the keyboard. Uh, a different way would be to use UI automation. Let's take a look at both examples and discuss why one is better than the other. So to begin with, let's create a new macro and name it chair. In this first um, iteration of the macro, we'll try to use keyboard shortcuts to do it. So let's say you've selected the portion of the timeline that you want to cue this chair for. The first thing you'd do would be to hit command option G to create a new clip group. So let's record that into an action. We use the press keys, hit record, and I type command option G. And click stop. Let's assign a keyboard trigger to this for now so that I can test it. It's going to be control X. I'm going to remove the trigger from the other script. Right, so now if I hit control X, the sequence of actions that we defined down here will be executed. So you see, uh, having a keyboard trigger and simulating other keystrokes is completely possible in Soundflow. So let's just, I'm, I'm selecting some stuff here, hitting control X, and that actually works. So the next step would be, after this has been done, would be to hit shift option command R. This opens up the rename dialog. We could actually append it to the same action, or we could add a different action to do it. In this case, let's just record another step. So you see what it will do here is first create a clip group, and then open the rename dialog. Let's see if that works. It sure does. So the third step would be to type in some text. So whenever you need to type in text and you're not pressing specific keyboard combinations, you need to use a different action. So if I type in text here, you'll see there's an action called type text. This is where I can put in chair. And so what this should do would be to create a new clip group, open the rename dialog, type chair, and then finally, let's just go ahead and add uh, pressing enter. So this, uh, this macro should actually do everything that we want. Let's check it out. Right, it actually works. So, but there's one important thing here. As you can see, there are no uh, waits. We're not waiting for uh, Pro Tools to have the dialog open. There's no error checking here. And imagine the case where this was actually happening so fast that for some reason Pro Tools could not keep up with it. Then we would have a problem. We could um, be in the situation that you get the clip group created, the rename dialog um, opened, but it's not completely open yet, and then we start typing chair before this dialog is ready. So depending on your system, that could actually happen. Uh, Ron, who initially made this macro, um, was experiencing this. And so I told him, well, it's all fine that uh, you can uh, record keystrokes, and this is a very simple way to do automation. But in reality, um, Soundflow's power comes through the, the very um, good integration with UI automation that we have with Pro Tools. And so if we're not using that, um, you could get into trouble. So the old way of solving this would be to add a wait, right? So this is probably what you've been doing in other automation software. So you would, you would add a wait here to make sure that that dialog had appeared. So we also know that um, we have something called the wait for UI element action in Soundflow. So we could also put that in here in between. So uh, remember, this is right after uh, we 
ask uh, to rename the clip. So um, this is the correct position to, to put it in. Um, if I open the clip rename dialog now, um, we can pick that UI element. So um, it's important that I select the full window by being here. So now um, we uh, create a new clip group, we ask to rename the clip, and then we wait for this window to appear, then we type chair, and then we press return. So already this would be an improvement to what we had before. This action is very fast, so it will not introduce any latency if it's not um, necessary. You can even configure how often should it check uh, the polling interval, how often should it check if this window appeared, and uh, is there a timeout. So this uh, by default says if uh, the window didn't appear after two seconds, it will um, abort the script and show an error. All right, so let's take a look at how this one works. Control X. Right, and as you can see, that works, but it's already more stable than it was without this action. So now that we've started doing UI automation, let's look at how I would implement this. Um, so the ideal thing is to never use keyboard or mouse simulation if there's a better way to do it. Keyboard and mouse sim simulation is sort of the fallback. That's the last resort. So um, instead of, let's walk through it one step at a time. There's actually a menu item to create a new clip group. So instead of uh, hitting command option G, let's invoke that menu item. So if we look at the clip menu, there's an item called group. And this will create a new clip group. So let's first add an action. Click menu item. Drag it to the top. Select the Pro Tools app. And then in the menu path, I type clip, enter, and then group, enter. So this corresponds to the parent menu and the submenu. And by now, we can actually remove this first one. But let's go ahead and also add the second keyboard shortcut as a menu item click. And it turns out that once you have a clip selected and you want to rename it, you need to use the clip rename dot dot dot. So let's add an action that calls that menu. All right, and I'm dragging it to the top. We need to specify the app again. So now I type clip, enter, rename, dot, 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 enter. And it's important that these are accurate. So what this means is now I can actually um, get rid of this because these two should be doing the same thing, just um, in sort of a better way. So the reason why we don't want to use keyboard if we can avoid it is that you never know where uh, the focus is and if for some reason um, you're using something that could also be a different shortcut in Pro Tools, you have less control over the actions. All right, so I'm hitting Control X again. All right, that still seems to work. So an important case we need to cover as well is that sometimes when you've searched for something in your clip bin, the clip rename function will not always work. So if I first create a new clip group, and uh, this now has a name that means it's not gonna be displayed in the clip bin. If I now try to hit clip rename, it will not necessarily work. I can uh, show you this by, by pressing Shift Option Command R now. You can see that there's a, a a blue indication up here, but it's not actually doing anything. Let's try to see if it works if I press Control X, uh, which should use the menu item directly. And you can see the same thing happens here, and I even get um, an error report where it says, well, the timeout of the two seconds elapsed, so um, the name dialog did not pop up at, within the first two seconds. So you can see that also means we get a better error message. Um, where if we had just continued to press the keyboard strokes, uh, we would not know that it had gone wrong and uh, the keyboard strokes would just continue to appear and that would um, cause it to fail. So the, the only way that we can actually be completely sure that this will work regardless is to start off a script by clearing the search. 
So we would have to do that by pressing a keyboard shortcut. So that would be Shift Command D. I can just type it now and you'll see it work. So let's just um, turn it on again here and then I'll add a press keys action uh, to the beginning of the script and record Shift Command D. So now our macro will start out by clearing the search. It will then create a clip group. Then it will perform a rename of that clip group, wait for the name dialog to appear, type the text, and hit enter. So let's look at how we can um, make these um, last few actions into UI automation as well. So we let's just um, run the command now, control X. And you can see it successfully cleared the search and did the rest of the steps. So if I open the rename dialog now, this text field right now, we're just typing text. That's a little slow, especially if you have um, a large piece of text. So let's look at how to set this value directly. And the action we need to add is set text, uh, sorry, set value of text field with text area. Um, so Pro Tools has uh, a number of different ways that they have text. Um, and uh, if this wouldn't work, you would try the other one here. Uh, but in this case, I'm pretty sure that this is the one we need. So the value we want to um, set it to is still share. So I'll just repeat that here. And then we'll pick the UI element to be the text field. And that means, let's just take a look at this. So it, it looks inside the Pro Tools app, finds the first window with the title name. So we can see that here. Then it looks into a group with the title name. That would be this section here. Then it finds the first text field. And so this is actually looking for a text field with an empty title. Let's just make sure that we just grab the first text field. So we know there's only one text field in this group anyway. So that doesn't really matter. Right, and so that should allow us to get rid of the type text action. Finally, let's click on the OK button, get rid of the return key press, and pick that OK button here. All right, and we've verified that this is correct as well. And the final step would be to then wait for this dialog to disappear. We always want to make sure that our action is completed because that makes it more easy. If you, uh, for example, want to build uh, a lot of macros into a larger workflow, you want to make sure that this um, action was completed before you move on. So we actually need to sort of duplicate this action, but instead of waiting for the dialog to appear, we need to set it to wait to disappear. So I add another wait for UI element, click disappear and I pick the full window here. Cool. And hit cancel. We verify that this was the window it found. All right, let's test it out. I select a portion, click Control X. Cool, that worked. Let's try again. Awesome. So you can see this actually is uh, uh, more steps and it's a little more cumbersome to, to build this way if we compare it to just the sequencing of keyboard strokes. But the upside is that it'll be a lot more stable. And this is, this is uh, where Soundflow really shines. So if you want to build complex uh, macros and scripts, this is, uh, it's very good to think of it in the way that only use keyboard simulation when you absolutely have to. Um, menu item clicking is very good. Um, uh, setting direct uh, values of text fields and waiting for the UI to update, that's what you always want to try to do. And then in those cases where there simply isn't another way to do it, you resort to using the keyboard. And in this case, I think um, this is okay because it's sort of a prerequisite and it's usually a corner case that you would have something um, uh, search for in the clip bin. So this is, um, this is the, the, I would say this is the best way to implement this macro. So now let's take a look at, um, you know, now you want it to add a different um, spawning category. Um, you would just have to go in and duplicate it and change the value here. And now you have um, 
another action. So it's a good idea uh, to sort of set it up and test it very thoroughly um, with the way that you set it up, and then you can duplicate them by uh, just hitting Command D, and then change the value that needs to be changed. All right, so let's take a look at how, how can we um, create a stream deck with uh, a bunch of these commands. For now, let's just take these two as an example. So you click New Deck here, and let's call it Foley Spotting. And um, I have a few devices. I, I should probably use my Excel here um, because this would be um, one of those cases where you want quite a few um, different um, buttons on, on the same device. All right, so I'm just going to type in a title for it here, and then I can search um, and find that here. And um, movement. All right, so now if I show this deck on my stream deck, I can now, by the press of a button, spot any one of those two, and it will just work. That's it for now. Thank you for watching.